Who's next to join? Who's next to join? Hey man, Mastery, you're online. I'm gonna invite you. And uh, we're gonna wait for more people to join. Going live. Let me see. I'm gonna invite you. I'm gonna invite you. Yay, hey, Master. How are you? <laughs> I was good trying to get this. This set up real quick. Give me just a moment. Yes. Left my tripod at the studio, so just <laughs> slapping some stuff together. <laughs> no problem. Take your time. No problem. <coughs> nice weather out there, man. Oh man, man it's beautiful out here. It's a beautiful Father's <laughs> Day. So what's the good word, my man? How are you? Life, life is blessed. Right. Life is truly blessed. I've been actually throughout my back last week. So I've been in, uh, you can see by this, by this cringe face that I've been <laughs> in a little bit of pain for the past few days. But, uh, but man, just, I got back from Brazil not too long ago yeah. and got to hang out with Mestre Hum. It's one of my, one of my biggest motivations, inspirations in my, just in life in general. He's just one of those people that, you know, uh, you you're around and you immediately get filled up you know yeah i want to talk about him in a minute okay <laughs> yes okay yeah man um, but yeah life is blessed cool cool it's great to see you likewise my, my man i love i love building new friendships and 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 just figuring out how to how to connect more yeah. around the world and like my my students are all over Instagram. They they asked to start the UCA Hayward Instagram page, and they're just like they're putting stuff all over the place. And yeah. me, it's like every once in a while, I'm like, hey, social media, and then I'm gone. <laughs> <for a while. laughs> yeah, yeah. You, sometimes you have to still figure things out how those kind of stuff works in social media, you know. So yeah, I'm gonna put my headset on just a little bit easier yeah. to hear while I'm outside. So give me just a second. All right. You hear me better now? You hear me okay? Yes. Yeah, much better. Cool, man. Cool. Yeah, like I, I always say to uh, my other guests, this is one of my projects that I'm doing now to connect uh, with companies all over the world and listening and sharing stories and um, yeah, to just to be a, uh, like, like a listener and listen from your stories and your perspectives and it gives me so much joy and energy to do you know, manifest Capoeira in, in this kind of way. And um, yeah. like you said, just try and make a new friends. And, uh, and it's easier to do now because we have social media. It's so, such, it's so, so easy to connect and going live and that's it. I just talk, just talk. It's incredibly easy. You know, we're at the, at the tip of our fingers. Yeah. We have the ability to connect with anybody in the world at any time and at any time we like, you know? And, and I like that idea of, of telling stories. Yeah. You know, Kapuna's roots come from oral tradition and passing exactly. one story to the next, yeah. you know, and in modern times it's become academic and, and it, and, and it's both are beautiful. You know, I, I'm more of like a, a wind blows and I go kind of person, yeah, you know, I'm yeah. not the greatest academic in the world, <laughs> um, you, you know, but, but it just feels good that in one way or another, we, we have access to information to be able to further our perspective mm -hmm. our our passion uh further what we share yeah you know and hearing other people's stories you know hearing other people's truths you know and sometimes those truths are our opinions because it happened in this moment or it's a story of a story you know but all of those things kind of come together to make up with what it is yeah you know and that's it's it's a beautiful thing i totally agree i totally agree that's one of the reasons i'm doing this as well you know and uh yeah just reconnect 
with people that I met years, years ago, but also connect with people that I never met before. Yeah. And just like, okay, just ask them if they want to be on, on my uh, podcast show and just let's see what happens, you know? And uh, I'm really thankful well, that you're great. here, man. I appreciate it. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Likewise, likewise. So both basically, I, I weren't gonna ask some questions or was just gonna just flow like a cup with a game. Um, okay. But the first thing I would just want to ask you is, um, yeah, tell a bit about your your origin story about Capoeira, your background in Capoeira. <laughs> how, do, how did Capoeira find you? Because you didn't find Capoeira, Capoeira finds you. Capoeira finds us, found us. It know? finds us. Yeah, it sure. finds us. And um, yeah, and how was it to, to be a tutelage under Master Ha, Sueli, and Master Corion? So how was it back in the day? How was it then? You know, um, in in high school, uh, I had a friend. Uh, is contra uh, Messi Gafanhoto. He he used to train with uh, with Messi Marcelo way back in the day. You know, and um, and he was a really good friend of mine in high school. And he he was a martial artist. His father was a martial artist, and he had showed me a little bit of capoeira. And so I kind of had like this little. I was fourteen or fifteen. No, probably fifteen. And I had this moment. I was just like, whoa, what is this? Yeah. This is different, you know? But it, he never really showed me, like, the shinga in him, but he showed me some moves. He used to kick me across the living room with that. I'd hold the bag and oh, I'd yeah. go flying across the living room. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I, I was, ever since I was five years old, I've been, you know, into street dances, you know, uh, break dancing, hip hop, you know. I'm, you know, at my, at my heart, I'm still a house dancer, even though I haven't gone out for a very long time cool. <laughs> you know and so uh i remember in high school kind of getting bored of of you know it was, it was the, the inception of the power b-boy generation you know the, the mid 90s you know early 90s and the power is just beginning to come into into the b-boy world and in my head i was like Man, i want something different yeah you know and i started to kind of envision this other contorted way of moving my body i remember very clearly but i had no idea how to manifest it i was like well these are kind of weird moves that i'm imagining you know, but I don't, what am I going to do with it? You know, so my creativity, I'm just, you know, flapping myself around. And, you know, uh, when I, I think it was, uh, I saw only the strong for the first time, you know, like men of my generation, yeah. you know, generation of the 90s. You yeah. know, if, if you're not connected to Eddie Gordo or only the strong, then you found it a different exactly. way, you know. And, and when I saw it for the first time, I'm like, oh, man, this is, these are, you know, minus the martial arts part, but, you know, these are all of the things that it's kind of like bouncing around in my head, you know, it was like, it was already up there waiting to kind of like find an avenue. So, you know, like I burned like two, I burned through like maybe two or three, only the strong tapes, just watching the first five minutes and the last five minutes and doing that stuff in my living room. Yeah, fine. You know, I, I, at that time, I'm, I was, you know, there's, there's high school, the end of high school, and then I, and then I graduate high school, and I'm out, you know, I'm out finding battles all the time. This is what I was. I was a battle dancer, you know, and go everywhere. And you know, my mentor at the time, Big Bob, who who also uh, started Capoeira with me, and had introduced me to the this other group of folks, Contra Mestre Pimenta, he's now Contra Mestre Pimenta, and. Uh, you know, the, the, the origins back then, they were like threat of physics and they were the power rangers before that. But those people, that nucleus of people became what today is circle of fire and soul shifters. Yeah. Right. Um, and they were, they were family. They, you know, we, we don't talk as much anymore, but those folks it's opened that door, you know, but up until that door in 96, when I, when I met them for the first time, you know, I'm just, I'm practicing my living room in the, in the, in the in front lawn and, you know, doing capoeira any way that I can, yeah. you know, and I, of course, I, I added it to my dance because that's what I was, you know, um, but then, you know, I met those guys and then they were like, oh, you should come to the show that we're doing. I went to the show. It's a Brazilian festival, you know, nightclub show. I went, I was just like, you know, and me, it's, it's, me and my dope. dance crew, like we all started the four of us. It was Big Bob and Ari and Jason um, and me, the four of us, we started and like we started at a time where Mestri Han and Mesh Accordion were, were just, they were vibing, you know? And there was like, there was this old guard of Mesh Accordion's old, older students, you know? And then there was like the new guard of like us yeah. who were all like 16 to 19. Yeah. And there was, there was a little bit of friction, friction you know? Like the, the <laughs> older guard, the older guard be like, oh, 
these kids come in here and, blah, blah, blah. and we're just like you know just cocky cocky breakdancers yeah, yeah. they're just loving yeah. to just jump around you know but you know it all it all was it was all magic you know and and it was it was incredible so like that's kind of how i started officially i started in 96 cool. but you know i had been trying yeah you know and i don't i don't really count it i say 96 you know but you know i've been trying and flopping around in my living room for a few years before that nice <coughs> i started in but yeah that's kind of how 96 97 97 is nice. yeah. a great time for yeah it was a beautiful time for <laughs> yeah yeah right uh, but yeah that's that's kind of how it found me or kind of came out of me and found Connection to Master Cordial Master uh, Master Lee was a professor in my first classes. Oh. You know, shortly after my first few classes, that she became Contra Maestra. Yeah. You know, in 2000, of course, it was just crazy. Yeah. That, that Batizado was like historic. Yeah. yeah. You know? Cool. And, and but yeah, that's, that's, that's the beginning. Nice, nice. <laughs> and what's in the name Hecruta? Why Hecruta? You know, originally it was Soldado Hazard. Uh, Soldado Hazard is a soldier without rank, like a private, you know, yeah. just that goofball that's just getting into the into the to the army, yeah. you know? Um and and then later on it kind of morphed into Hecruta Zero. And Hecruta Zero is Beetle Bailey, right? Uh, there's a there's a comic strip here in the United States. It's called Beetle Bailey. It's this goofy private that's always getting in trouble by the sergeant, you know, and in Brazil. It's the same comic, but it's it's uh, Hecruta Zero in Brazil. Ah, okay. So, you know, partly, I think partly just because, like, anytime they say jump, I'm like, how high? Yeah. You know? <laughs> but also, I used to wear my, my cat. My ball cat was very curved. Yeah. You know, in those times. And Beetle Bailey, you never see, in the comic strip, you never see the eyes because ah. his bill is so curved. So I think that that's where cool. the connection. But, you know, sometimes they don't explain it to you. They're like, Hecruta. That, like, that's Hecruta it. Zero. And then you gotta look for it. You gotta be why. Yeah. And how many how many people out there have like just the you know they they got their name in a batizado from somebody who they saw once and it has no like connection to who they are exactly. you know like exactly. I'm I'm really glad my masters gave me my name and it and it fits you know the guy who's always jumping for the uh, for the sergeant nice. you know great story yeah. man great story thank cool, you cool so um. So let's talk about a little bit about Mestri Han because I have a little story about my own about Mestri Han. Uh, okay. I've never met him, but do you remember those magazines back in the day, Praticando Capoeira? I do. Kind of came with, I do. The, with the CD, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man. Absolutely. Yeah. So I collected the, the, the magazines and just browsed through it, and they were always coming with a CD. And it was like a, a Praticando, CD, Praticando Capoeira CD with um, uh, songs with uh, Fanyo, Burgess, Accordion, Ha, you know, those was that's, awesome. It's one of the best yes, things out there. Yes, I played it every damn time. But they get, they had their faces on the cover. You know, I I, I, I knew the masters, but I never I never heard of Matri Ha. Huh? So I saw yeah. I saw his, his his picture and he looked so like a cool guy to me. He was he had his sunglasses and like a jacket. So who is that guy, you know? And Matthew Han. And back in the day, uh, Capoeira information on the internet was really limited, really scarce. So I tried to find some information about who that guy is, Matthew Ha, and, and, I, and I loved the song what he did with Matthew Accordion. Um, and I started to, 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 to sing his songs as well, you know, like uh, Mani Um Braço Pra Ela, yeah. um, Eu Happy Anti, all this kind of uh, stuff, and it stuck with me, stuck with me, stuck with me. And uh, then I, uh, I had, I had, I, I had a, a student, but, but was also a, a former camera for a, a camarade from, of, my, of mine. His mom is from the USA, from California, and, uh, and we played couple together. But he went uh, to California uh, during the holidays, and he went to Berkeley, so he went to uh, uh, accordion school with Messi Ha and those kind of stuff. So I asked him, please just give me an autograph for Messi Ha, accordion, if, if, you know, if it's possible. And he was, he, I think he was also uh, by, the, by the famous Batizado, it was beginning of 2000, 2001. And, uh, and later he came back to the Netherlands after the holidays and 
Masri Ha gave this to him and he gave it to me. So indirectly, I have a kind of small connection with Masri Ha. I have never met him. I always was kind of uh, a fanboy of Masri Ha. I saw, I thought it was, he looks, it's, I think it was such a nice, nice guy to, to, to look at. And especially with his tattoos, as well, like a big giant frog on his, on his arms. Like that guy is, is he's like fucking awesome. You know, if I even base myself to tattoos that he has on my own arm, like, wait, 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 like this. <laughs> you yep. see? The Cardi Bears. Yeah. The Cardi Bears silhouette. Yeah, yeah. So I was really a fan of his, and it was always a, uh, a, a dream to to meet him. But it came, came to fruition. But I always remind reminded this the connection with Messi Ha huh? and the songs that I yeah. sing. And that's also one of the reasons that I also wanted to to talk to you. But because how how was it to train with him, to train under him, with Messi Ha? Huh? Um, I, I definitely get a little bit emotional when I talk about. You know, Mastery, you know, Mastery Han that way. Um, first of all, I what was the what was the name of the kid that went to Berkeley? Because I I feel like I remember his name. I remember him. His, yeah, uh, do you remember his name? His ne normal name's Axel, but his couple ah. is Chef. No, nah, I remember <laughs> him. We <laughs> all we all had it. He was a goofy kid, yep, I know. and he was no. super, but super cool. Yes, yeah. super cool, goofy but cool. And I remember him like cool. <laughs> I remember he was. I don't remember how long he was in town for, but I remember, uh, yeah, it was great, great yeah. human being, right? Yeah, it was man. super fun. Those times were really fun back then. Yeah, that was my training um, buddy, man. Yeah, um, you know, Master Lee Han. Th there is Master Lee Han came from you know that that generation of people who were who were pushing the limits of, of the human body, you know, machismo in the, you know, seventies and eighties was just a different thing. You know, it was like, Oh, you can do a thousand Armandas. Well, then I'm going to do a thousand and five hundred, yeah. you know, oh, you can do 2000 milage composites. I'm going to do 3000, yeah. you know, like there's these, he always talked about these stairs in Junji Ai, yeah. right? And they're big, huge, like set of stairs. And people used to run the stairs. And so he was like, okay, well, I'm going to put somebody on my back and I'm going to run the stairs. You know, like, it was just like, push, 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 push. And so, you know, he got to the States and, and you know, when, when I met him, I was just like, I was just in awe of this human being that just exuded such power, power. you know? Yeah. And, and I can honestly say, Say power and cut you, oh. which is really not easy no. to balance. You know, no. he would he would knock people out on a regular basis. You know, like he had this, you know, start the armada, fake the martello come or hit the martello coming back the other way. Um, you know, not quite a martello hodado, but but anyways, and and he would put people to sleep on a regular. You know, but it was interesting the way that. You know, you think you hear that, oh, he would knock people out, you know, and you think, oh, man, this guy's intense, you know, yeah. like, but there was so much yeah. and respect for the art, yeah. you know, it's like you go into a boxing gym and you expect never to get punched in the face, like, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, if you go to a jiu-jitsu, you expect not to get choked out, mm -hmm. what are you doing, you know? And so what I, you know, there's all, there's this balance between, you know, the art of capoeira and the martial art yeah. of capoeira, and sometimes we kind of, those lines get blurred. Yeah. And from the very beginning, you know, he was just like, he was incredible, uh, not contradiction, but um, uh, but uh, embellishment to mesh accordion. Mm -hmm. You know, he was like, he was just a, a very, he was just like, he was the, he was the yin to the yeah. yang. Mesh accordion, old school. I'm showing up, we're doing this, and I'm oh. the master. Yeah. And, and and Master Ha had a just new flow, you know, Master Cordeon, old school, Capo de now, you know, boom. And Master Ha had all this extra flow, you know, he, uh, and, and the way that those two parts came together was great for us. Not yeah. always great for them because they fought a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like they did, you yeah. um, know. But being, but Master Ha, there was just like this. You were around him, and you just immediately felt you were also a superhero. Cool, you know. And to this day, you know, 
uh, despite his condition, you know, like I was just with him, you know, like his, he doesn't have use of his left arm anymore. You know, he, his, he, he doesn't walk around too much, you know, like, um, it was great for the both of us to get re-energized with each other, you know, like this, one of the people in my life that that's worse more than, than anything, yeah. you know, so it's a kind of like, you know, have that reconnection in person and not just on the phone and, and build, you know, those energies back up. Both of us left really good. It's funny because it was like, but he had an appointment before I was leaving and it was like at one o'clock and he's like, okay, Hex, who calls me Hex? I was like, okay, let's, you know, uh, let's have a hug. I'll see you later. You know, I'll, I'll probably won't be back. And his wife's like, no, 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 we'll be back before he leaves. He's like, okay, whatever. I'll see you later. You know? And I ended up not seeing him later. Uh, you know, he didn't end up coming back because his appointment went long. Yeah. And it was just, it was perfect. Okay. Yeah, you know? Yeah. It was perfect. Like, boom. And so, I mean, I'm kind of talking more about him in this general sense right now yeah. as no how problem, it was bro. to train with him because he was just, that, that's who he is. It's just like, you, he would always be like, hey, do it. Do what? Right, just put your hands up and do this and then twist like that. And we always had this, there was this one kid, uh, Bejigatu, uh, and he was 12, 13 back at that time. He could do anything. He was the most naturally gifted cup with a person I ever saw. Cool. And Messi would be like, oh, do, you do this, do this, do this. And this one time he did a, a Pyongi Mo, yeah. full like 360, but in the poultry with one hand. Oh, wow. Like arch and 360, the whole thing. And we all looked at him and we all wanted to slap him. <laughs> <laughs> but but it was Nestle Hunt that was like instigating that. He knew that, that this kid could do this thing so like incredibly. And then he and then Peggy got to stood up. He was like, "Was you like that?" Yeah, yeah. And we're all like, "Yep." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, his 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 music was was incredible. You know, um, you know both him and Master Cordeon. You know, and Masoli too. Masoli is a little bit sometimes reserved when it comes to music. She's an amazing singer, and, and she leads hard as well. And Master Cordion and Masoli, huh? Both have that, you know, that old grit. You know, I think Capoeira for me, Capoeira music, and this is subjective, right? But Capoeira comes from this African background. It grew in just like blues grew. Yeah. You know, so when you listen, when you listen to like old capoeira music you hear the parallels of like let's say pb king and louis armstrong yes. and you know messi ziquiel yeah. and paulo dos anjos yeah. and, and, and you know further back messi jean grande jean piquet there's this readiness yeah that was just I, i've been like rocking his album every day yeah. you know um but there's this there's this grit and this like it's not clean but it's beautiful mm -hmm. you know and and Master Cordion and Master Dion both had that and both have that to like the high end. So like growing up in their academies, you know, Master Cordion with his musical academia, yeah. you know, and both of them having this just inherent ashe from all of their travels and all of what they absorb. And then having that be, you know, our focus, you know, Master Cordion in his albums, gets really creative, adds all these things and adds voices and this these beautiful creative project projects, right? Yeah. But then when it's time for the harder, it's like all of that stuff is gone and now it's just like this raw this yeah. rawness. Yeah. Right. And so training with the both of them and listening and feeling their 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 shame, their music and the way that they bring themselves to the table, like there was no other way for me to like end up and end up right here, you know? Nice. Walking these these two worlds, um, kind of new school capoeira, old, old school capoeira, and then Mestre Ali being the you know this this glue, this cariño glue that made all of that stuff come together. Nice, you know. So yeah, yeah. I mean it's went went way in different places with it, but you know it's kind. Of, I'm a very tangential speaker, so sometimes I go no oh, problem. <laughs> Just speak speak your mind, let your mind speak. Yeah. that's why we're here. <laughs> yeah, for nice. Sure. Sure. nice story, man. Nice story. Thank you. Yeah, because uh, uh, yeah, like I said, I always had a kind of a, a slight connection with with Mastery Ha, even though I've never met the met that guy. But I yeah. always found some emotional touch to to his songs, 
it's always resonated with me. That's why I love to sing one of his songs or just listen to it. And yeah, it's it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. And and yeah, and about his condition when I when I when I saw that a couple of years ago, I was like, whoa, what happened? Yeah. You know? And yeah, I mean, it's been twenty years now. It started in 2003. He moved back to Brazil in 2004. Yeah. You know, so it's like now it's going on 20 years that he's been living with this condition that's like taking his physicality away. Yeah. You know, can any of us imagine that? No. You know, can any of us imagine having all of that taken away from us, you know? And, you know, Mesriha, to me, right, was the most complete Kapurista that I ever saw. Right, I don't want to say the most dominating, although he dominated a lot of people, yeah. you know. But complete, somebody who would show up and be like in the hall and just be ready, boom, eyes engaged. His flow, his strength, his speed, his musicality, right? His his the way that he shared his energy, right? It was it was complete. You know, and and I totally was supposed to download a whole bunch of videos off of his computer, but you know, it was a very short trip, and yeah. we didn't get to everything that I wanted to. You know, because I want I want more video of him out there. Yeah, you know? yeah. There's a beautiful there's a beautiful short clip of him and Messi Mariano playing at at Messi Dondi's place in Tucson, in 2000. I don't know two on the blue mat. Um, you know the the video that that they got put together for for the Musica dos Mestres documentary. Saw, yeah, uh, yes, it's blue tango, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, and and you know, there, there's just there's there's not enough of our there's not enough video of our heroes no. in their prime. You know, and you know now today there is. You know, in in twenty years, bunch, there's bunch, gonna be video yeah. of everybody. Bunch, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but like right now, yeah. like there's not very much video of that time because it was a di also a different time. You know, there was access to video cameras. People did videotape. Yeah. But I remember we were on this Brazil trip. Uh, we did this blue encounter, right? It's a blue belt encounter in Brazil, 2002, three, I don't know, somewhere around there. And um, and one of the guys wouldn't put his camcorder down. Right, the whole time he looked at he was everything, everything that he was doing was just like behind the camcorder. And Mesha Cardion almost broke the guy's camcorder, he almost like tossed it across the room. It's like, how are you going to live behind this screen? Right? Yeah. And it's kind of what we are doing today. Today, yeah. But in by the millions. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And you know, I think what I think that moment was one of those moments that really stuck in my heart about like I don't want to be behind the camera all the time, you know. Like I, I, I appreciate what social media offers us, mm -hmm. but I also know that when I start posting and then I, I don't, I get likes or I'm like, okay, who put a comment? And then, it, and then like all of a sudden, half my day is is oh, like yeah. stuck on like yeah. seeing what this post generated, and I'm like, man, I have a three year old, I have a, a little a daughter on the way. Oh, cool. You know, like I'm, you know. I'm from I'm from the '90s and '90s was like we I just saw I, you see these memes all the time. It's like we got it. We went out the door when the sun when the sun came up, yeah. And we had to be back exactly. indoors when yeah. the when the when the street lights on. came yeah. on. Yeah. That was that it was, was our generation. Deal. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if we can still do that. Just you know, like I'm not I'm not a I'm not a um I'm not like a, a paranoid parent you know i would love for my son to just be out and about all day long but the times have changed things yeah. are a little bit more intense these days yeah. you know so like how much how much of what i got to experience what my son gets to experience and how much of what, what my students True. get to experience right will 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 no how much of what i experience will my students get to experience if everybody's behind the camera yeah. you know what i mean and so you know it's it's not a judgment it's just it's a it's a perspective yeah you know, and how can we how can we be more in the moment um, than you know waiting for a moment to arrive online? Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. Totally agree. But yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. I don't even know how we got to this part over here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, um, cool. yeah. Cool man. Cool. So how how's your class been going? Uh, you know, my classes are my classes are amazing. They're small right now. They still haven't recouped, 
you know, we get new people come in and then they don't stay too long. And then new people come in and they don't stay too long. I feel like here in the Bay Area, there's so much things to do yeah. that people are still trying to like figure out what they want to do now that they can do whatever they want. Yeah. You know, um, my older students, they're always on fire. You know, like I leave, when I leave the studio, they have keys, they lock up, you know, like sometimes I see them on the camera, like class ends at like nine ish. Yeah. And sometimes I'll see them on the cameras at like midnight and they're still there playing music. You know, they just, they just keep going. They hang out, you know, they go there. It's, it's, this is what was always for me. Yeah. You know, I grew up in a social environment with Capoeira and, you know, when we grew up, things were different, you know, and, and every generation things change. And, you know, and so, I'm really grateful that even though, you know, things are changing and the way people interact are different and there's a lot more sensitivities and, you know, I want to be very, um, I want to be very uh, thoughtful of everybody's sensitivities, you know, um, but I'm, re but I, and at the same time, I want people to just, just convive, yes. right, to just yes. live together, just together, you know, and, yeah. and, and, and it's really, really nice that, that my students do that, you know. Um, I just, uh, in March, you know, had my first formatura. So I had five people that graduated, four people cool. that, that I raised. Yeah. And, you know, one of my best friends um, from Berkeley who, you know, Bolici and Hapa and uh, SPC, Makulele and Koflo, um, those four have been like my right hand, you know, for forever. You know, I lived with Bolici for a long time. You know, we trained together in Berkeley for a long time. And when he found out that I was doing the formatura, he asked if he could, you know, get formatura with me. Um, and then, you know, the other four have just been there through thick and thin. Um, and and they really kind of lead and pull the rest, you know. Life has been stressful lately. And so whenever I come to class and, you know, I, have, I need my mental health things, you know. Like, I, I, you know, I talk about it frequently, you know. Like, I have therapy every two weeks, you know, like life is not always easy and, no, and we no, need no, to no. figure out how to be compassionate with ourselves to say yes it's okay you know so sometimes I, I show up at class i teach the kids because it's hard to get kids teachers to kind of cover and then when it comes to the adults i'm like hey you know what you guys can you just you just handle it yeah you know because i gotta i'm tired i'm exhausted just not right today no. and and they they handle it you know and it's it's really a blessing to have those kind yeah. of students that all that always have my back, you know. Um, and then aside from the studio, like I have this amazing contract with the the local school district, you know. And the last uh, the last school year, we provided capoeira to nineteen elementary schools oh, cool. throughout the year. Cool. You know, Mesti Mascara uh, was on the team, yeah. and two of my students at T and Guarana were were on the team. And Your audio, I don't hear you. <laughs> oh, oh no. Again, some technical difficulties. <laughs> I'm gonna invite him, I'm gonna invite him back, guys. Wait, I'm gonna invite him back. Let's see if this works. <clears throat> Be patient, my viewers. I will invite him back. Let's see if he's, he's on offline. <clears throat> Great stories, right? No problem. I will invite you back. Here and three, two, one. Okay, there we go. Sorry yes. about that. No problem. Um, Things happen. Yeah, I ended up pushing. I tried to decline a call and then. And ah, then okay. Uh, so now I don't even know what I was saying. A bunch of students having your back. Oh, <laughs> The school district program. Yeah. yeah. Oh, let me get my headset back connected.
All right, I think I'm back. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, but yeah, you know, like it was a great, um, it was a great opportunity to to kind of share Capoeira with the the local kids. One of the the school districts close to us, they're asking for Capoeira classes as well. So I'm trying to build my team to offer Capoeira to to after school programming. Cool. You know, I. All right, are we back? Yeah, we're back. <laughs> okay. Oh man, we love technology and we hate technology. All right. Um, so yeah, you know, just just doing my best to share Capoeira um, wherever I can. You know, it's yeah. just really nice to have for the first time in my in my like adult life. I'm not commuting anywhere. I used to commute up and down the bay to like go teach classes and you know, be all over the place. And right now I, I teach, my school is like, is less than two miles from my house. I teach in the, the local school district. I actually uh, also have, um, was invited last year to, to teach at the, uh, the local university. So, you know, little by little, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to, you know, just build this opportunity yeah. to share up with it, you know, already built and, and the, well, you know, I, I, <laughs> I, I get really uncomfortable feel like, like when people say you already built your name I'm like uh, I'm still working on it yeah you know? yeah I know what you mean you know, know what you mean, but yeah <laughs> um, but yeah you know and but you know with all of that you know you just get you get so tired you yeah. know like and I and I get I feel I feel guilty sometimes because I don't go to the local hodas you know like I'm just like I get I just right now I'm at this point in my life where I'm like I want to spend time with my family you know and where my energy is when I have energy left over, it's where I want to be, you know. And I and I hope that over the next you know year or so that changes when I begin to like delegate a few more classes and become you know more in a in a um, especially with the school district stuff, be more in like a a, a supervisor or administrator yeah. role and getting other people to teach and then being able to like okay now okay I can I'm not teaching you know twenty twenty five classes a week I'm teaching. 10 or 15, yeah. and then I'm like, okay, yeah, that feels good. And then now I want to go to the huddles, you know, and I want to go to the events, and I want to do all the extra stuff. And, and you know, like, I used to feel guilty about it. Now I just, like, I know where my boundary is, and I'm content, you know. And when I get to be at the huddles, it feels that much better when I don't feel like I'm beating myself up for not being there, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Or force, force yourself to go there with, yeah. Know, with less energy and, and and for real the bay area capoeira community is on fire like it really is the the folks that are out here are putting in work you know and it's like a lot of respect to like so many of the capoeiristas that are here you know like you know meshi Mascot has been here for a while and uh, uh messi aldo is contra messi aldo but i say i always say messi aldo because he's just he's, he's he's amazing and the way that he just controls the space. Yeah. It's nasty, you know. Mastery Aldo and Mestabora and uh, Mestri Chico has been in town for for a bit now, you know, yeah. like and 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 all of the all of the Bay Area locals, you know, uh, uh Bojio, Mato Mosquito, uh, Hajo Velho, um I mean, the list goes on and on with like just the amazing capoeiristas that are here locally and and the hodas are are fire. Yeah. You know, like yeah, nice. You know, it really is. It's really is. It really is special. You know, and and I just I need to prioritize being at more of that. Yeah. You know, it's because <laughs> I, I need I need more of that exchange. I just need to find how to cultivate the energy together. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Nice man, because there's only one recruiter, right? <laughs> uh, well, there might be others out there, but I'm I'm the only I'm the only one like me. Yeah, you know yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Do you still have contact with the old guards? Of the students of Accordion, like uh, Espartelignon, Cravo, Afastruz, Galo. Uh, I I just saw I just 
saw both of us Luis and Gallo in Denver this past weekend. Cool. Right, Denver. I got, I got on, I came, I flew in from Brazil on Thursday. It was my wife and I's anniversary. We went out to lunch and then I took a nap and then I packed my stuff and I got on another plane to head to Denver oh, cool. for the Denver event. So it was just like this, this crisscross real yeah. quick. But Messi Aves Cruz was there, Messi Gallo was there, Messi Beating Jella and, and, and Messi Grillo are now in charge of the, uh, of the Colorado school. Um, you know, Sponta and I touch base every once in a while. He's super happy being a dad and, and, and living the, the dad life, you know, so I don't see him in Capoeira very okay. often. Um, you know, Cravo, you know, we, we, we connect every once in a while as well. Um, you know, um, who else? I mean, yeah, Hadjo Velho and Mato Mosquito, they're, ah, they're yes. doing their own work locally. Yeah. Mestres, Mestre Hadjo Velho, Mestre Mato Mosquito, they're doing their work here locally. Um, the, the Berkeley School um, is, is being held down by my collective of students um, over there. And they're, they're doing good work. They're doing the work that they, they want to do, you know? So, you know, more, more power to them over there. Nice. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I miss, I miss, I miss my generation. Yeah. Um, but you know, life, life happens, you know, happens. And, and people choose, people choose their paths, you know, people choose more capoeira or less capoeira or capoeira that's convenient or capoeira that's a sacrifice. And, and not one person has the right, uh, uh, not one person has the right to sell somebody else. Okay, how should you do capoeira? Mm. You know, like, look, capoeira is very serious to so many yeah. people. You know, like it's 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 religion, it's doctrine, it's 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 politics, it's yeah. it's everything. You know, it's it's as it's as deep and as intense as people may or may not want it to be. You know. And then there's other people who love this torch and love this passion so much, but have chosen uh, their lives to be a different way, you know? And so, you know, I, I've seen a lot of discussions and dialogues lately. It's like, well, how dare, you know, people become, uh, uh, leave their masteries and then open up their own schools and they're not under anybody. Um, and, and I don't know. I don't know. There's a part of me that agrees that we need, leadership yeah. we need guidance yeah. for sure yeah. um but you know there's people that are like professores and instructors who have like 20 years of capoeira and decided to leave their teachers you know for whatever reason yeah. you know sometimes sometimes they're growing apart sometimes the teacher's like hey i want you to go open up your yeah. own school and go do your thing yeah. you know like that's how that's the old school the yeah. old school is like go set up shop somewhere and and do what you're gonna do yeah. right so like there's there's a lot of like uh a lot of back and forth as to like you know how you should do capoeira and and master cardion always used to use this this term like the owner of the truth who is the actual owner of the truth you know like who owns the right to say this group should do it this way or this group should do it that way you know like i'm not i'm not going to be that person i want to try and respect people's like choice to share capoeira the best that they can you know and Obviously, you know, some people are going to say, well, no, they have to be under this and that and that, and they have to follow these rules. Um, and I totally respect that, right? I'm not trying to say that that's wrong. Um, but Capoeira comes from this place of, of, of oppression and then liberation and then more oppression and marginalization and then freedom and then expansion and now it's global. Meshi Bimbo is like, one day, Kapwet is going to be around the world. And people laughed at him. And look right? at now. And now it is. Yeah. You know? And so, like, it's just interesting to, to continue. Uh, I don't know if people... This one's hard to say because, like, if I say it, then, you know, obviously I open up to Asteta. But, it's like, I don't understand how people are, like, trying to speak for other people True. and that's that's just the worldwide you know so everybody wants to say no no you should do this or you should do that or you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do that but they, i if you respect me and my choices i promise to respect you and your choices yeah. if you have some knowledge that you want to share with me because you want to educate me then i'm happy to receive it however you try to tell me 
that I should be doing in a different way. What's your reaction? If I tell you, no, this live is wrong, what's your reaction? Hey, wait a minute. Why is this, why is this wrong? Exactly. You know? So how do we figure out yeah. how to, to, to kind of find a little bit of balance, yeah. you know? And, and that's, that's a challenge because, you know, everybody's going to say, well, no, my way is better or this way is better. And there's, there's no way in that way. There's no There's way. No way. It is what it is. Exactly. You know, Master Pradhan also says it's like capoeira is not yours, right? True that. Like, oh no, this is my capoeira. I this is the way I you know this is my capoeira. You know, he's like, oh, correct this, fix this. No, no, no. This is the way I like to do. It. This yeah. is my capoeira. And he's like, capoeira is not yours. No. Capoeira, we we belong to it. We were fortunate enough to have capoeira have touched our lives and to be a part of it. You know. And how do we continue to like be a link in the chain as opposed to a broken link, right? Yeah. And that goes for people that are up on top criticizing down and also people down criticizing up, yeah. right? And, and criticizing from down up, there's a lot of criticizing criticisms to have, right? The past five, 10 years of Capoeira have been these firestorms of you know, power dynamics and how, how do we treat each other and how can we be better? You know, like, I, I don't have the answer, no. but I know that I, I'm, I'm always open to listen and figure out how I can be better so I, I can connect to you better, how my students might be able to connect in a larger context for the next generation, yeah. you know? Educate, I don't know. educate yourself and, and to, to share, you know? And yeah. That's the, that's the most important thing. And, yeah, respect each other's, and each other's choices, which you made. Yeah, that's why I also say you know? I would say for yeah, like Capoeira is not like you say Capoeira is not, it's not yours, and Capoeira finds you. You we're not finding Capoeira. Capoeira comes yeah. on your path, and that's that's the way it is, for me as for me, you know. So, but yeah, we, yeah I totally agree with what your how your vision is about that. You know, it's 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 challenging, yeah. you know. Um, it's challenging, but life is challenging. And how do we how do we figure out how to kind of walk through life with its challenges and and take lessons and be humble enough to accept those lessons and however they come at us. It doesn't matter. I'm Master Cordial, I keep on referring to Master Cordial. And Master Cordial is like I'm the last person to get it right. This is my, <laughs> as as a master of cup winner, ninety nine percent of the time I'm wrong. Right? He it's something he says. You know all the time to all the students, you know? And so like, I try to find that humility. He's also like, he, he says 99% of the time I'm wrong, but he'll still say, do it. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Yeah. One, of the most, one of the most famous things, <laughs> we, we actually had a shirt uh, uh, printed up one time as a training yeah. shirt. Yeah. And it was like, don't do what I, I say, do what I want. <laughs> Don't do so this, what I say. Do, do what do I want. want. Yeah. <laughs> so. Nice. Yeah, I, it's uh, it's been a uh, it's been quite a quite an amazing experience to have Mesh Accordion be your your best friend, your mastery. You know, I lived with him and Mesh Ali for six or seven years. You know, like woke up and before I even woke, <laughs> when I first moved in, my uh, so the the two bedroom doors were you know parallel to each other, facing each other. Yeah. And the bathroom was in the middle uh, of yeah. the two bedrooms. So I would open my door and I try to open it as quiet as possible because as soon as I opened my door, he would hear it. He'd pop out and then he'd <laughs> emboscada. And I'm like, can I just go to the bathroom first? <laughs> and, and and you know living with him is has been one of like the most precious things you know in my life you know because he's my best friend and he's my master i respect him upon high because of because of who he is the knowledge that he holds right he has more knowledge in his nail than i have <laughs> it, have it pulled into me yeah. in like these past you know what almost 30 years yeah you know and so it's just like yeah you know my i I am so grateful to have had the three messages that I've had to kind of like make me who I am today.
you know? And, you know, there was a time where I was just as intense as they used to be. Yeah. Oh, get out of there. Oh, train harder. Mm -hmm. Right? Imagine how you say, if, uh, if you were late to class, you had to do 10 push-ups for every minute that you were late. Right? It was like on the side, I, oh, I got to do 20 push-ups today. And, you know, like, I don't do those things anymore. Yeah. You know, like Master Cordial was like, no more push ups. I'd rather you in class training than doing push ups off on the yeah. side. Um, and so, like, yeah, I tell my students, look, I'm going to be easygoing and I'm going to be encouraging when you walk in the door. Yeah. Because I think that most people need that encouragement when they walk mm -hmm. through the door. Mm -hmm. Right? When you're ready for me to push you, you ask yeah, me. Yeah. Right? You. And I'll push you. Yeah. Right, I'll, I'll sometimes I'll make you regret yeah. that you asked me to push you. Yeah, but you take that, that responsibility on yourself. True, that's true. right. Because you know, like I just see in so many different schools and so many different teaching methodologies, right? And we're not even talking specifically about Capoeira. No. How many intense teachers that show up is like, no, I know what's best for you. Mm -hmm. And of the hundred students that walk through that door, maybe you have five that was able to withstand that. And those five maybe become incredible, yeah. right? But you, you lost 95 people that now don't want to share whatever that thing was. Yeah. And so for me, Capoeira, I go back to my students hanging out to class, playing music and doing what they do. Capoeira's community yeah. is how do we connect? How do we share something special? And it could be whatever you want, right? It's not just Capoeira, but Capoeira is my tool that I'm able to use and, and share community. And so if, if everybody that walks through my door, I immediately put intensity on, I guarantee you most of those people are going to, like, go somewhere else, right? Exactly. Because right. they're not thinking about Capoeira. They don't think about Capoeira in this intense way. I share the wall. I share my wall. There's a boxing gym right next door to I share a wall. People want intensity. People want, like, uh, they're going to go next door, and they're going to punch each other in the face, and they're going to have a good time doing it, yeah. right? Yeah. In Capoeira, because of the way that Capoeira is perceived, this is it's the dancing martial art, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the, it's the you know? Yeah. Uh, then I try to find a way to get people who walk through the door to understand, look, first and foremost, Kapwood is a martial art. When you walk through this door, please understand that if you get kicked, that's a part of the deal, yep. right? However, everybody has their different level mm -hmm. of, like, how much they want to engage, right? And if you want to engage, relax. If you want to come sweat, you want to walk out the door and not think about Kapwood when you leave, Go ahead. I'd rather you be here sharing your energy in any way that you can. And as you grow and as you want more, then you show me by putting that intensity in. And I've, I've found that it's a really, it's healthy for my mind, you know, because I'm working with the students and not standing above them telling them what to do. And it's healthy for them too, because we feel like there's this even exchange yeah. between teacher and student, yeah. you know? That relationship should so, be yeah. really important, the relationship between the student and the, and the teacher, uh, like my own master, he's, he's, he always said to me, I'm not standing above you, I'm standing next to you. You know, we're guiding each other. I'm guiding you in your calculator path, but you're guiding me as well. You're, I learn from you, so we learn from each other. And that's yeah. what I said to my students as well. Whilst I'm teaching, I'm still learning. You guys, you know, teaching me as well. And I'm not standing above you because I'm the teacher there. No, we are doing this together. <laughs> And we have to figure things out. We're a community. And that, that, that's yeah. my philosophy. That's my approach. And for me, it works that way. Because I don't like to, to look down to people and tell them what to do. No, I, I want it to be more flow organic. And uh, that people want wants to do things that I ask them to do. But not like, uh, you know, tell them what to do with like, like a drill sergeant kind of stuff. Yeah. I'm not that kind of, kind of guy. Yeah, I mean, I thrived in that, you know, like, I don't know, I don't know if I heard a, a, a kind word from Mesh Accordion for like 10 years. It was like, oh, go, go, nah. right? everything was wrong. Mm. Um, and, but that's the way that I thrive, right? I don't want to know what I'm doing right. I don't want to know what I'm doing wrong. Yeah. I want to know how to fix, you know, that's, that's where I've been since I was little, you know, like, I want to fix something. If something's wrong, I want to fix it. I used to take computers apart and toys apart and whatever and put them back together. My mindset is how to fix what's wrong. Yeah. So for me, I thrived in that. Both Master and I and Master Cordy. I was like, ah, I didn't get it right. Ah, you did it wrong. Blah, blah, blah. And that's the way I thrived. It's the old, old school yeah. master apprentice yeah. 
theology, right? Yeah. The master knows, but the master's not going to tell you. He's going to, like, guide you a little bit and kind of figure it out. You know, I, I, I always describe it to my students, um, especially those that haven't really spent time with Master Cordial. It's like being put in the middle of a room with a whole bunch of tables full of food, yeah. right? And each table has a different food, but you have your blindfolded. And then you say, okay, find the steak. <laughs> like, you got, there's this way to like guide people, but not give them the whole curriculum, give them the whole synopsis of everything they're going to learn because it doesn't exist. No. You know, we can build curriculum for sure. We can say, okay, green belts, you need to do Coco Ania, Uhole, and the sequence of Beam. We can kind of have these guidelines. I don't personally do it. Um, I like to kind of see where my students are yeah. going and let them Into evolve it. in a way, yeah. you know? But, there's, but absolutely, people with this, in this day and age with the amount of information that people want, of course people want a little bit of like a, a roadmap, yeah. you know? But, but I'm so, I feel so uh, passionate about the idea that, that sometimes you just have to follow your notes, yeah. you know? And I try to mix a little bit of like a mechanic. Well, I do a lot of like mechanical stuff. I've injured like 12 years of my capital life. So like I have a lot of mechanical stuff as we warm up. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, certain things that are very like structured mechanically. But in order for people to kind of like build body awareness yeah. quicker. Yeah. And then they build body awareness quicker. And then they can do more stuff sooner, right, without getting injured. But as soon as we kind of get past that mechanical side, it's like, okay, figure it out. You know, this is the idea, right? I do a lot of contextual training, right? I don't do a whole lot of like, okay, let's face the front. Let's do a whole lot of, you know, formula stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I say, okay, this is the context. We're at a heavy holder and people are coming at you with advanced zones. So put yourself in that context, you know? Ah, we're flowing a little bit more. So open yourself up a little bit to kind of be. And I, I kind of describe it to my students as like game IQ. This is like you're working your IQ of being able to be in the game you know, and then even if you have only a handful of skills, you can still be in a game and, and acknowledge how to be in the yeah. game, you know, and so, you know, and of course, yes, yeah, sometimes, okay, we're going to do 100 armadas today, we're going to do this, we're going to like build structure, or we're going to do this little formula, and we're going to go, you know, okay, we're going to left side 10 times, and we're going to right side 10 times, but I, I really feel like there's this, this, um, you know, and it's it's a lot of what Mesh Accordion did with us, you know, it's like, okay, we're going to present this situation and you're going to fix it, you know? And then the end of the, se the end of the sequence has like two or three options. It's like, okay, well, you can do this. If you do this, then you do that. If you do this, then you do that. And then that way there's this idea of like, I'm, I don't know what's happening and I'm not just following a choreography. I'm like actually training my mind in yeah. the exchange of, in, in the context of what we're working, on, you know? And I find it works really well, you know? Yeah. So, cool. yeah. But that, that, that whole kind of like free form training, you know, that mimics your game, I think is, is incredibly, incredibly important. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Nice. Nice. Uh, last question. So when was it for yeah. you that you finally, you finally uh, came to the conclusion that Aconia was a big deal? So when was it for you for, oh, this is Master Cordeon. This when when was when was it for, uh, for you? I mean, I'm. It was early yeah. on, you know. Like we had the, you know, the early two thousand batizados at the at the Capital Arts Cafe. Yeah. Back to the list. Back. The list of masteries. The list of masteries that were there. Yeah. Just like. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like the traveling you know with mastery and seeing you know like how uh it was like i need your autograph i need your autograph you sign my book sign my cd sign this sign that it was like you know when we first started it was like oh it's the old guy the old guy the old guy you know uh, but again we were like we were teenagers yeah. you know we see the old guy with the beard and he's like you know um but you know like it was pretty pretty quickly, you know. We got our we got our heads around like, okay, yeah, he's big. Yeah. But you know, but he always said, "Is like the place that I'm least acknowledged is at home." You know, because we're so used to him. We're yeah. so used to 
yeah. living next to him. We're so used to walking in class and there he is, you know, that it's for for many people who walk the thousands of people who walk through those doors over the years that he's been in the in the States, I don't know how many people were really understood like who this man was or yeah. is. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, you know, like uh, every once in a while I get a little bit you know, there's a there's a sadness and a and a uh, uh, and also a, like an anger. It's like, you know, there's been plenty of times where over the years, you know, meet somebody's like, oh, whoa, you're a student in Mesh Accordion. I love Mesh Accordion, Mesh Accordion, Mesh Accordion, Mesh Accordion. I didn't know he had a school because we didn't present ourselves, you know? Like my generation, the generations, we didn't travel as much. We were very lucky to have everybody else come into our, our home, yeah. you know, yeah. and experience Capoeira on a worldwide level from the comfort of our own studio, you know? And and sometimes that's that's... You know, that's hard to, it's hard to soak in yeah. because, you know, I know, um, I know how hard I work, but I also know how hard, uh, how much I haven't, you know, okay, I'm putting my videos out. I'm making people see the work that National Cardinal is doing. You know, I haven't gone to this many events, you know, like mm-hmm. I go to, I used to go to a lot of events right now. I'm being a little bit more yeah. focused because I'm focused on family, yeah. but like I used to go to tons of events. And you know my pride in my pride is like yes I don't show up being like ah I'm Mr. Cordial student right mm-hmm. I would show up and be like, like hey I'm Hekruta and he's oh where do you train oh, I train with Mr. Cordial Mr. Ali I say huh right but still you know like Cordial de Ouro and Bada and Campo do Brasil and and all these groups around the world you know everybody knows the group they recognize the group if I walk around say I'm from the UCA well UCA what's UCA yeah. I measure cordial students. Oh, I measure cordial students. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so, like, you know, it is what it is. It's not, I'm not, I'm not saying, like, oh, that's crap, you know? But what I'm saying is that, like, you know, I I want to do my best to pass forward yeah. measure cordial. My teachers work. Yeah. You know, all of them, you know? And and when I, when I do, you know, I feel good, good that, people hear where I came from, you know, and, and that these incredible masteries made me who I am, Yeah, you know, and, and the capoeira that I get to share is because of that, yeah. you know, like the message that came song, you know, I'm a mash, muito obrigado, pela capoeira eu poder jogar, pelo au, pelo este dobrado, pela capoeira eu poder jogar, you know, so yeah. You know, beautiful, but but notoriety isn't the most important thing. You know, like having the name on a billboard is is one thing, but having that content in your heart and in and in who you are as as a being that's what's matters, is a completely man. different yeah. is a completely yeah. different thing. <laughs> you know, so yeah, so yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Do you yeah. do you got uh, do you got any starstruck? by certain people in Capoeira or maybe back in the day that you thought, oh, damn. I mean, back in the day, for sure. Like, whoever grew up in the 90s, the first time you saw Messi Amane, you was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. the oh, guy in the movie. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, and, and over the years, yeah, you know, like, uh, I, I got to play Messi Cobra Massa in Chicago one year and, um, and, you know, I back in the day, I mean, most people who grew up in the nineties was just like, you know, Spihumirin, you know, all the videos that went by, you know, and you know, like the first time that I got to play him, because I I watched hours and hours. Probably he's the most watched uh, capoeirista in my in the nineties, in nineties early two thousand. I just like mimicked everything that he did, you know, as so many people did, you know, (laughs) so many people did, you know. And so, yeah, I mean, obviously you, <laughs> obviously you enjoy meeting the people that inspired you, mm-hmm. you know, and, and of course, you know, especially when it was like people flipping and tricking and doing all kinds of stuff, you're like, as you're younger, you're like, oh my God, you know, and then you grow up and then you begin to see the nuance, you see the detail yeah. in yeah. how people exchange yeah. and then your perce- your, your perception of what you want to absorb or what you want to share totally changes. Like, oh, the guy did only one Martello, but 
the, chase the whole okay. lead up to the Martello yeah. was just like everything, you know? So, yeah, I mean, there's too many people, like Starstruck wise, there's too many people to say who have inspired me along the way, who I've been fortunate enough to cross paths with, shake hands, um, and absorb some of that. So whatever I absorb, I'm just doing my best to pass forward every time I get a chance. Nice, man. Nice. Cool, man. Cool stories, uh, man. And thank you. Thank you very, very much for the opportunity. You're welcome. Um, my, so, my, so my family's starting to show up here for, for Father's Day. Yeah. So, uh, Happy Father's Day. So I got to gotta, thank you very much. Uh, I'm not sure if you're a father yet, but if you are, happy Father's Day. Good. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers around the world. Right? Muito obrigado. Nada. Blessings, Nada. my man. Nada. Appreciate you. You're going to stay in contact, man. For sure. For sure. Contact. Hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to, you know, like with the baby coming, I'm probably not going to travel for the next little while, but I hope to to, to set up a, a Europe trip um, in the not so distant future. And, and if I do, I'll definitely. Touch base with you, my man. Yeah, man. Let's do that. Cool. All right. Thanks, All right, man. brother. Thank you. God bless. Nah, Talk to nah. you soon. Talk to you Talk soon. Bye-bye. Ciao.